Sup, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. In just a moment, we're gonna crack into a painting process I did outside. Now, uh, a few words before we begin. Um, there was a lot of sun, so you don't get to see the process as well as I wanted you to, um, unfortunately. So I'm gonna cut out the boring part and just run it through uh, as fast as I can, but still show you the interesting things. Uh, a second thing, uh, is that my battery, the iPhone battery was gonna run out. I literally finished uh, the, the video with 1% only. And I was really afraid I wouldn't get in the outro on time because I wanted to show you the final result uh, in the same place where I painted it. Uh, but I was lucky enough and I was able to wrap up everything quickly. Uh, so this is why I was kind of hurrying uh, around the end of the video, okay? So in any case, let's get started. Okay, so I'm starting out by preparing the paper to draw on. So I'm just taping uh, some masking tape. Uh, I always do, do this outside, though I always tell myself that I'll do it inside because it's a bit hard sometimes. There's wind and it's just annoying. So now starting with the drawing process. Now you can't really see all that well, so I'm not going to dive too deep into the process. I'm just going to, you know, show you this little bit of time lapse uh, and I'm soon going to show you the result uh, up until this moment and then we'll continue. Okay, so basically what I've got so far is a big fat mess with all the green trees in the background and I'm gonna soon show it to you uh, exactly drawing up close because uh, it's a bit hard to see with all the sun. So let me show you. And even I'm close you can barely uh, see some of the details so maybe I'll move it a bit forward the light is kind of chasing me here. Uh, but you can see here lots of just trees and uh, tree trunks uh, and my job is to make some kind of order from all of this big mess. Uh, I'm gonna give it my best. Um, not exactly the thing I planned on painting, but hopefully it'll turn out uh, well. So we're just gonna have to start and see. Uh, the initial wash, I plan to give myself a lot of time to do wet in wet and really uh, not stress myself too much on it. So we'll see how that goes. So now moving on with the final touches for the drawing. Um, just going over all of the lines that you saw and making them a little stronger and now I'm preparing to paint so uh, I'm putting my uh, water cup it's the click and go by Faber Castle I believe fill it up with water uh, I've got the the tissue there on the left or the uh, paper towel and I'm taking out my brushes and I'm ready to start painting uh, so now what you see is double speed just because there's a lot of mixing time so I don't want to bore you too much with that um, so this is the initial wash and unfortunately as I mentioned a lot of the process isn't going to be included just because uh, I was so close to running out of battery that I knew that it won't last. Um, so I prefer to actually show you the end result outside uh, it, even if it means that I'm going to have to compromise for the content, the amount of process that I show you. And this is just meant to be a fun video, not too long. Uh, so now what I'm doing is painting everything that's uh, in the shadow. I mean, I'm going over the sky and then the shadowy side of the building and I'm leaving the right side of the building a little lighter. Now now I warm things up a little to the left and this is where I've got the trees at the top uh, and they connect all to the uh, other foliage uh, that's in my crop. I'm cropping it really similarly to what you see on the left but only uh, the left section is cut out so the tree on the left is a little closer to the actual edge. Okay and I'm leaving the highlight on the building there. Uh, I'll probably revisit it uh, later on. And uh, you see there's a lot of mixing here because I want to make sure I prepare the right amount. And here we go, I'm putting a bit of warmth there uh, on the building. Um, and you see the bead at the edge of my washes or my, you know, the parts of the wash. So that means I can uh, wait for a while longer and mix a bit more. Uh, the colors I'm using are very basic. It's French ultramarine, a little bit of burnt sienna, some uh, chromium yellow, uh, things like that. Uh, and I will later on add a bit of um, kind of a rose or quinacridone rose or magenta uh, to it. And, uh, and also probably I'll mix a bit of um green thalo green okay um so yeah and near the bottom i really start to turn it into green finally the, the final green that you'll see when we're done uh, so we're gonna recap and then continue with the process so i want you to check out what i've got so far i have the initial wash it's super light let me show you so this is what we've got so far the sun is in our favor um got a little mosquito here <laughs> now it's gone so um here we go this is the painting so far and we've got the reference 
Uh, so I changed quite a lot of things. Let me let me just give you a, a slower look once again. Uh, so I'm gonna include this tree over here, this tree, that tree, some more trees here, and of course uh, the main one here and the building. Okay, so these are all the elements I want to show. Uh, try to get this to be as even as possible and to just start <laughs> indicating the lighter uh, oranges and warm colors that are in the scene so that I can use those later on as highlights. Uh, really didn't go uh, that dark at all with this wash. So this is my favorite part actually, I didn't talk about it a lot. Uh, the part where you're putting in the shadows, I love that because you get this underpainting and it takes uh, a lot of the pressure off your brain, which is I think important. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is on the left I'm gonna try and do maybe some wet and wet and then I'm gonna connect that to the right and build the shadows in the building. Okay, and you see really I'm not following exactly what I see, it's quite different what I'm doing from the from what you see. Um, I'm sorry that uh, the angle isn't so good. Uh, I think it improves in other videos, but with this one, uh, hopefully here I'm doing the wet and wet. Hopefully uh, you can still make out what's going on uh, on the paper. Now, the thing is, again, I had to skip a lot, unfortunately, because uh, because of the battery. So what you'll see now is me uh, working on that tree in the, in the middle ground, I guess. Uh, which is a beautiful, beautiful tree. I really enjoyed working on it. I'm just using a bit of green with the chromium yellow and the French ultramarine and then a bit of uh, burnt sienna there. Uh, and I'm going to add a bit of red, as I mentioned. This is a bit of indigo going in there just to darken things up uh, near the bottom of the tree. Uh, I find indigo to be a really good, uh, strong blue for shading. And I, I didn't... I don't think I ever mentioned it, but I'm using indigo quite a lot to shade things um, because it's a very strong blue and sometimes my French ultramarine can't achieve those same uh, levels of darkness. But the, the thalo blue, uh, the, the um, uh, indigo blue always seems to be able to. Now the tree trunk is very dark as you can see, it's in the shadow, so I took off some of the water on the brush and then I'm, uh, and then I'm using almost dry uh, paint straight out of the tube. Um, and you can see I'm just, I'm not worried about connecting things too much, I just know that I'll be a little careful later on, it's a transition I'm going through, of not worrying too much about every th single thing being connected, um, because I just find it really worrying and you have to work really fast, so, and I see a lot of artists that, like John Yardley, I started talking about him recently in my podcast as well, they don't really care about uh, their wash being super even, or, you know, they just make things happen, and you see now I'm just painting around that tree and again sorry for the distance hopefully the final result uh, will entertain you and also me talking uh, so anyway yeah a bit, a bit of uh, I think we had a few good tips here the indigo blue is really good uh, not worrying too much about merging everything together uh, because I find that ex especially with the artists that I kind of started my watercolor journey with the uh, you know the impressionistic ones so now I found a few ones that aren't that into connecting everything so yeah so John Yardley is a really good one uh, I recommend you check out his work he just puts the values wherever he sees them and that's it uh, another good example of that is Stan Miller Stan Miller really just all he talks about is the getting the drawing accurate and then putting the values where they are. I know I'm starting to sound to myself like a broken record, but hopefully that's just me. Uh, so the entire left section of the of the painting, unfortunately you won't see me do everything there. We're gonna skip ahead in a few moments, uh, but you will see some beautiful negative shade uh, painting here on the tree trunks, around the tree trunks. Um, and also I zoomed in a bit so you can better see. Uh, I did learn from making this video and so I actually have a few other videos already prepared to be edited and published. And with them I started a little closer uh, so so you can better see everything there as well so so this one's a bit of a, an odd one because I used it as kind of a learning uh, learning and experimenting uh, kind of a video uh, so now I'm uh, using a lot of phthalo green uh, mixed with a bit of the chromium yellow and I think maybe I have a bit of yellow ochre somewhere there, though I'm not sure and here I'm using a mix of indigo and uh, quinacridone rose or, or magenta 
uh, so cool red and it works really really well together to get the the shadows you know indigo is strong the magenta is quite strong um daniel smith's quinacridone rose is a bit stronger than than schminka's magenta okay uh, i believe that the schminka's is a little more transparent as well uh, but they still work well together so now i'm trying to make out what's going on there with the building and the shed and everything but i'm really close to uh, running out of battery so i will soon cut this video and go straight to the final result uh, so you, again you'll forgive me about that some processes are really detailed uh, some are less and this is one of the less detailed ones so let's get going okay friends so uh, this is what I've got so far let me show you again the view and the painting I'm gonna run out of battery on my phone real quick uh, so I'm gonna have to cut it here and I will show you later on uh, the final result hopefully when I recharge because I'm in the park and there's nowhere to recharge so uh, i'm gonna cut it now and i will show you the final result okay so i'm done with the painting and let me show you i only got one percent so the phone's gonna turn off i'm gonna show you now so check it out this is the final result i hope you uh, like it uh, i'm very pleased with how it turned out i'm gonna take the brush out of my mouth uh, here you can see once again the reference uh, and here's the final one uh, i think i did a good job here with the highlights and the midtones and the and the shadows and everything uh, there's a good uh, i think it reads well uh, i like the splashes and the way i went a little crazy over there uh, i thought i would darken this uh, further uh, along the way but i just didn't feel the need to because it really is pushed to the back that way uh, alongside these trees here uh, so overall really pleased with this one uh, let me wrap up this video so I'm gonna take a bet that I will be able to wrap up the video before the phone turns off thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this one don't forget to subscribe follow me check out my podcast my Instagram my patreon page and everything else uh, I really really want to thank you for your attention and for watching these videos and let me know in the comment below what you thought of this one and I will talk to you again real soon